Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, June 10th. Around 11 a.m. Mountain Time 2021, the models are in and they're showing there is relief potentially for the drought in the West. But the big story, South faces flooding threat as heavy rain and storms continue. Wildfire conditions prompt warnings in the West. Keep calm. It's boom time. Mega drought takes dramatic toll on Colorado River systems that provides water to 40 million people. Just take a look at the bath rings on Lake Mead and you'll know it's at the lowest level it's been, well, in decades. And as a child, I actually went out here and saw Lake Mead down at that level in the 80s. So it's a cyclic event and it will end itself, but that does not negate the dramatic toll on the Colorado River system that provides water to 40 million people. But it looks like by the end of June, there could be some relief. Residents raise concerns after smoke fills Valley in Colorado. Yeah, the last few days, today is perfect, but yesterday and the day before, we were choked out here with smoke coming from Arizona and New Mexico fires, which are still burning as many other fires across the US burn. Flash flooding in the South, severe storms for the Northern Plains and heat in the central US. Now there have been stories about a heat wave that happened over the last few days, but I digress. In the 1930s, there were thousands of cities in June with temperatures above 100 degrees. Back in the 1930s, most of the country was in a heat wave, Record, records broken everywhere, yet the media is silent on this. It gets up to 80 and 90 degrees and they call it a deadly heat wave but it pales into com com comparison to many other events in the past. Dangerous flash flooding is likely once again today across very saturated sections of Arkansas and Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 from a slow moving and organized convective rainfall. Meanwhile, severe thunderstorms with all hazards are likely across the Northern and Central Plains today. All hazards meaning tornadoes, hail, lightning, hello. Finally, widespread heat advisories continue in the central half of the U.S., along with extreme fire danger in the central Rockies. Those wind warnings are in the pink. Heat warnings in the maroon. Flash flood warnings and watches in green. And, well, take a look here in the maroon as well. I'm trying to confuse you a little, I, pref I guess. Boom! There we are. Let's get a little picture here. Hey, how the heck are you? How's everybody doing? beautiful day outside here. Here we're looking at the precipitation forecast through the weekend. This is going to give you Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you can see where that moisture is moving. So this entire region is going to be rained through the beginning of the weekend. Southeast, it will rain all the way through Sunday, which will be a fun day. And there's this other system that's moving from North South Dakota across Minnesota today down into the Midwest here through misery. And that will break up by the weekend and maybe bring added pressure to the Northeast here. So Links will be below so you can check yourself before you wreck yourself. Here's the GFS total accumulated precipitation, and you can see the precipitation in the southeast like a beast through, here's your Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It looks like it'll kind of quiet down on Monday. Nothing in the Four Corners region until Wednesday, June 16th, and then it picks up a little 17th, 18th, 19th. You can see the Four Corners getting that monsoonal moisture up through Arizona, New Mexico. So this is some good news for some rain to feed that parched Colorado River system. Blizzard conditions hit Victoria as millions warned of severe polar wet blast. Wow, is that true? Who knew? We do have the headline, parts of Southeast Australia are being slammed by the first winter storm of the year with blizzard conditions taking hold in Victoria. Millions of Australians living across New South Wales at ACT Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania, and even Queensland have been warned of severe weather today. Hey, hey, with damaging winds, heavy rain, thunderstorms, flooding, widespread snow and hail possible. Sounds like a grand solar minimum forecast. Sydney on track to the record coldest June day in 120 years, bringing us all the way back to the centennial minimum. That was my accent. Underwater avalanche continued for two days. This story intrigued me, and it will intrigue you too if you've been following along. Scientists are reporting what they say is the longest sediment avalanche yet measured in action. In geologic terms, we call these uh, types of events turbidites or turbidity currents. And they're well documented in the geologic past on continental margins, where the edge of the margin forms a cliff. There's these landslide deposits. 
But until recently, many people have been considering these features to have something to do with global deluges, washing over continents. But, so let's get to the facts. Now, this submarine landslide occurred in West Africa in a deep canyon leading away from the mouth of the Congo River. And is the canyon formed by these events, or is it formed by a Noah-like flood when the Earth stops spinning? Well, the only problem is that this Congo canyon here is the same feature that some people sh uh, show on the east coast of continents to prove that the Pacific Ocean washes over continents and that the Atlantic washes from the east to the west over continents. The only problem is this is on the west coast. Yes, the west coast, moving west. Explain that one, and they can't because their story is a fairy tale. There's no geologic evidence that a giant six-mile wave washes over continents. It would be obvious, especially because we have mega flood features up in the northwest of the United States that haven't been washed away, and they are from outwash from uh, ice dams during the melting of the Laurentide ice sheet. Why aren't they washed over? How come they didn't get erased? It's called logic and critical thinking. And apparently, people in our blogosphere have very little of it. Now, the Congo Submarine Canyon, where this two-day landslide occurred, had nothing to do with Noah's flood, a cat catastrophe of the oceans washing over continents, and everything to do with submarine geology. Period. Are you listening, Doug? Earthquake alert. We have two interesting quakes. The Earth is getting bigger, as confirmed by the East African Rift and the seismicity here. So, very interesting. We also have a 4.6 in Salut, Canada. Very bizarre quake up there. And more central cratonic quakes, uh, which are deep here. 570, this blot echo, all the way inland in Argentina. Yes. USGS raises the volcano alert level on the farthern westernmost volcano in the United States. Yes, and this has been, aviation code has been raised to yellow at Mount Gadioli. 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 Gadioli? I don't know how to say that. It's a stratovolcano and the westernmost volcano in the United States on the Aleutians. And according to AVO, a slight increase in the seismic activity was observed at this mountain on May 18th. Beginning May 27th, there has been a substantial increase in the rate and size of the small volcanic activity. Here you can see some what appear to be lahars or lava flows. Very, very fantastic. Link below. Mount Rapehu Crater Lake. Temperatures are lowering after reaching 40 C, which is good news. Or the calm before the boom. So prayers go out to people near Mount Rapehu. Worldwide Volcano News. Some people reporting that Semeru blew to 40,000 feet were wrong. Dead wrong. And I checked Himawari and didn't say a word about it because there was no eruption but it took up to 18 hours for them to correct the record. And in fact, the fake Semeru eruption to 40,000 feet wasn't an eruption at all, and anyone could figure that out. It was simply a cloud. Let's see what they have to say here about it. The previously reported high-level possible ash cloud above the volcano turned out to be a meteorological in origin. That means a cloud. So, no aviation color code. But what we do have is an uptick in Pele. Oh, so we've got Souffre, St. Vincent, pounding the Grenadines and St. Vincent itself. And now Pele is, has awoken, as we suggested, maybe a possibility. And Liwoto also puffing and passing. Sabancaya to 21,000 feet, Reventador to 15,000 feet, and Mount Pele volcano in Martinique. Small tremors continue as signs of volcanic unrest. And they're putting all fears to rest. They say it will erupt soon, but probably not for years. This is just a very early precursor based on no information whatsoever. <laughs> they just don't want to put fear into these people. The volcano remains restless. Seismic activity continues to be slightly above background levels, showing that the volcano might be potentially preparing itself for new activity in the medium term future. <laughs> not the long term, the medium term, but it's not the short term, so don't worry. And we also have uh, an update to report on you on Etna Volcano. 
The volcano is becoming restless once again. Strombolian activity at the southeast crater increases here. The volcano's new southeast crater has become more and more active over the past few days and started to show weak Strombolian activity of varying intensity 24 hours ago. So we'll keep a close eye on Etna as well. Now the mysterious origin of the northern lights has been proven. Well, we've already told you five, five years ago how the northern lights are formed by alpha waves and energy entering in a ring around the pole and also exiting down on the South Pole. Similar to the magnetic field lines you see, the, the energy pumps in to both polar regions and you get a glowing effect in the form of, well, aurora. The aurora borealis or northern lights could easily be described as Earth's greatest light show, a phenomenon that is exclusive to the higher latitudes. Not for long. <laughs> it has scientists in awe and wonder for centuries. Now, side note, three years ago, the mainstream, including mainstream science, was reporting that auroras were gone forever because of global warming and it's all over. No more auroras. Well, the funny thing is there's no connection. <laughs> it has everything to do with space weather and the sun and our magnetosphere. And they're claiming that the great aurora mystery was finally solved. But it was solved decades ago. Um, a group of physicists now are taking credit for it from the University of Iowa and have proven that the most brilliant auroras are produced by powerful electromagnetic waves during geomagnetic storms. Can you believe that? I've never heard of such a thing. Wow, those guys are smart. Oldest livestock genome reveals origin of today's goats. And it's fascinating. They did a little bit of research on the genomic information from archaeological sites. And what they extrapolated is that people were raising goats commercially 10,000 years ago. And they know this by the amount of females versus males. Because when you raise animals to create more animals, you call the males and you keep all the females which is not natural in a, a natural population. And what they're finding here is mostly females. So clearly goat farming was going on 10,000 years ago and they just didn't figure it out then. Hello, it obviously has been going on for quite some time. Massive 2,500 year old Egyptian monument discovered in farmlands. Makes you think it was discovered in Iowa or Nebraska, but it was actually discovered in Egypt, in a, at a farm in Egypt near the pyramids which makes it a little less spectacular, except that the fact that this is probably made by Aswan granite. And no one knows how that they peck these hieroglyphs into granite using copper. It's impossible. So lots of missing information uh, coming out from our past, like this 2,500 year old megalith that's seven feet high with hieroglyphs from the 26th dynasty in Egypt. No one knows how they made it but I'm sure they'll make up a great story. Arctic animal revived after being frozen for 24,000 years in Siberian permafrost. The microscopic rotifer put Rip Van Winkle to shame and it might just cause the zombie apocalypse. Now, the, why they are awakening things that are this old, it not in, uh, anyway, what could go wrong? If I get eight hours of sleep, I'm doing pretty well. Meanwhile, a microscopic Arctic animal got 24,000 years worth and came out just fine on the other side. A new study detailed the remarkable journey of a deloid rotifer, a minuscule freshwater critter that survived for millennium in the permafrost of Siberia. And there, and there it is. Clearly, we don't know the pronoun for this uh, creature, so we'll just leave it at that. Gargantuan dinosaur discovered in Australia is one of the largest ever discovered. That must mean it's pretty big. Australotitan, yeah, well, they named it big, was a colossal leaf-eating dinosaur. Now, if you believe that, well, this animal would have to eat 47 acres of forest a day just to stay alive and stand up. So, Australotitan was a colossal leaf-eating dinosaur, the biggest yet found down under. Some 92 million years ago, Cooper got stuck in the mud. They've named him. That's how insane these scientists are. The slop sealed the fate of the gigantic long-necked leaf-eating di dinosaur, concealing its bones until 2007. Well, there it is, the artist's rendition of the giant vegan. A 62 kiloyear geomagnetic paleo-intensity record from the Tamir Peninsula in the Russian Arctic 
paper coming out recently for you to peruse basically proves that the geomagnetic field on Earth is highly unstable, fluctuates with regular periodicity, causes mass extinctions, and is happening now. Holy macaroni. I did an, uh, a video up on Magnetic Reversal News, and I think I put it up on Oppenheimer too. Please check that out. Did that last night. Happy bird seeds, Colorado grown. Happybirdseeds.com. Happy birds fly higher. Medicinal seeds at the lowest prices in the entire planet. Nine varieties currently in their flock, and coming soon, nine more. The only place to buy your medicine. So check out happybirdseeds.com, happybirdseeds.com. Tell them Diamond sent you. And one other shout out, one of our friends up in Canada, who I believe is part of the Jibwa tribe, is not only a friend of the channel, but an artist and a fantastic one of that. We have some of her art pieces, and she uh, is having a blowout sale for the first time ever. The only problem is she doesn't have a studio. All this stuff is happening up in the middle of nowhere. And if you want to get some of her products, all you have to do is take a look at some of the stuff she's doing, necklaces, she's got earrings, she's got dream catchers. She'll send you all of her supplies and you just make an offer. Now, something like these bracelets and these neckbands take hours to make and she's asking like $20 and $30 for them. Pennies on the hour. And this is Native American art inspired by Native American um, ideals and made by a Native American, Ojibwa. So if you need some earrings or if you know someone who would love these products, please contact Angela Kadu, a friend of the channel, and get yourself some earrings, some dream catchers, and some art. Now, I have a few of her pieces in the house here. Absolutely gorgeous work. And these are oils on canvas. And they're a steal as well. So if you're interested in some Native American art, or some Native American jewelry, beadwork, please contact a friend of the channel and a good friend of ours, Angela Rosine Kadu, who is also Kinu Iqui Manatawan. And I, I probably nailed that. That's just how good I am. Now, her email address, we will link it below. And let's see if we can find it here real quick for you. Make an offer. She wants you to make an offer and she's be, we be willing to send you all these pictures of all of our products. You just tell her what you're interested in. Earrings, bracelets, necklace, hat bands, dream catchers, or artwork. And she will send you all the pictures. And then you can contact her at Angela Cadeau 2 at hotmail.com. A-N-G-E-L-A-C-A-D-I-E-U-X 2 at hotmail.com. That's Angela Cadu 2 at hotmail.com for all of your Native American art needs. And she also will do custom pieces because I just made that up. And she probably will. Boom! Hope you got something out of the video. Happybirdseeds.com and Native American art, all from friends of the channel. Keep it in the community. That's what I say. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons. You keep us doing these videos daily. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Thanks to all those people that share these videos. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't. And share this with like-minded people. Be safe. And that's a boom to knowledge.